I'm going to cut the thread from the outside going in over because it's a nice big thread. I can see what I'm doing and I've got a nice recess for the screw cutting tool to finish up in. Right, so I've got the compound slide set 27.5 degrees. What I've advanced the cut on with the compound slide and it basically only cuts on the front edge of the tool. That's the way it works, that's a proper way to do it. An easy way to check that you've got the compound angle set right. That tool there is 55 degrees, half of that's 27 and a half, which is that angle there. So if you put a straight edge on there, that is the same angle as the compound slide. Simple as that. 27 and a half degrees, 27 and a half degrees. Next we need the tool on centre height. And we're going to make sure that the tool is going to go square into the job. So it's going to cut evenly, it's going to it's no good having the, the tool like that, it's going to be perfectly in line. I simply use a tailstock centre to line the tool up on. You can see it's lower there, coming up towards centre there now. Still slightly lower. That looks good to me. To get the tool at the right angle of the job, we we'll use one of these. It's called a fish tail because it's probably shaped like a fish's tail. That simply goes on there. You line the tool up in there, it's a perfect fit on the 55 degree tool. That's touching perfectly on the tool, it's touching on the both faces of the job. So if we nip up the tool post, the tool holder, like that, I'll move the camera into a different position so you can possibly see a little bit better how it works. Right, so the, the tool touches on the parallel face. On the face of the job, you can see it going into there, touching both sides of the tool, touching the job, so that tool has got to be at 90 degrees to the job. I'm going to blow the inside of here so I can put a nice light cut on, and the cut will stand out so I'm against the blue. Right, it's set up so the tool. It's just touching the job, wind it well away, engage the feed nuts to make sure it's run the right way, which it is. Once these feed nuts have been engaged, I can't release them. We'll put a cut on with a compound slide, just enough to mark it. Right, so I've got to reverse the layers to get the tool back out. I hope you can see this in here. It's lining up with the 12 two thread gears perfectly. Which is just as well. You can see it better there. Right. Right, so just cut a thread so you wind that into clear. Clear it backwards.
how you're starting, but the problem I've got is I can't turn this because it's sitting in the other bed. I can't just engage the chuck because I lost the I lost the drive. All I can do is take the chuck off and try screwing it in that way. Just a right fucking pain. Right, what's going on and it's going tight on the, the good part of the thread so now we're getting very near it's going to be a compromise between being too slack and being just nice Have three more very light cuts. Hopefully, this is going to be. The dog's bollocks. That's good. It's still not going all the way on. I think one more, one more cut and see it. It's got to go right down to that face. That face down there. Let's have one more, basically a spring coat, and that's going right down to the, to the bottom, so that's the thread finished. As you can see, I've turned it around in the chuck, and the camera didn't work, but anyway, I've got it turned around in the chuck. I just want to take some of the, the bulk of it away, and I think I'll put another finish on here as well, so it's easier for the That's a pretty good demonstration of why you don't go poking your fingers in there. That's pulled the end of that brush off like it wasn't even there and that's probably stronger than the end of your finger. I actually did that on purpose just to demonstrate what happens when things get stuck in layers. The noise I hear is the imperial change wheels clapping around, there's nothing to worry about, there's nothing the matter with the lathe. I'll normally change them and put the metal ones back in for a normal machine, but I have got some imperial screw cutting to do after this. Let's 
just about there. One more cut. That's coming off there and leave them. the nut nice and thick and heavy and chunky like that. I put a little radius on that edge there and then turn it around the chuck and finish the taper on the other side. To do the last operation which is just a taper on there and the lights come across that face I need to grip on the inside of the threads. So I put some nice soft aluminium packing pieces on the jaws just to protect the threads. There's a couple of thousands there, very near. Right, that's what we'll call that done. Any better than that, I'll get the, the clock I've got on the inside in, that always gets it right. Right, we're going to try this all back together now. Quite a nasty looking device. The threads are a nice fit. A little tight bit there, but I certainly do wobbling about. It's not piss wobbly slack like the other one was. Tightens down and nips onto the plate as it's supposed to. I don't think that will give any problems at all. Once again, it just remains to say thanks very much for watching, thanks for subscribing and a massive thanks for all the support from your wife and your dad, it's still coming in. It, uh, I think it has made a massive difference towards Deb's recovery. And I think a lot of people have mentioned with me, mentioning my wife and what we've gone through, it has helped some people that are going through the same thing that we went through. Anyway, thanks very much. So if you don't want to watch it, just don't watch it, it's as simple as that. I can't say that, I can see what I want.